Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Distant Worlds 2 as the Xenox episode number 29. I'm actually, I don't know why, I'm just feeling pretty excited to get this episode underway. But let's see. I wanted to start off with, um, well I want to acknowledge the fact that our spies have just done so much work. I was looking at the tech tree before I booted up, just kind of trying to pre prepare myself for this episode. Um, we've almost completely stolen component prefabrication. I think we'll have it, obviously we will have it, I should say, after the next year, whenever it comes back, that'll be stolen. Um, improved shores we're doing ourselves, and after that we'll do a big ship design upgrade, because it has been a while since since we've done that. And, I mean, it's not necessary to do it necessarily, just because we're in peacetime, and um, we might have we gotten the... So the reactors is the only thing which I think um, would be important for us to upgrade for efficiency, but I don't think that those have changed. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think, I think we went from putting these on the fusion reactors to going up to V2. There's another interesting thing, what was that? Yeah, the engines? Nope, yeah, so that's, I'm pretty sure that we're, are we already on the quantum engines? We'll find out, I mean, we need to get optimized thrust output. That's probably one we can steal from the, um, the consciousness, whatever they are. Whatever you guys are. What are you guys called again? Buscarin consciousness, I think. I kind of want to take a look at their planet. Which one is the inhabited? Only five and a half billion people. Galactic Diplomatic Center. Okay, yeah, that's, that's impressive. Space Traders Guild. I think we have that too. High Speed Shipyard and Construction Academy. Not altogether too, too incredibly impressive. Kind of reminds me though that I should probably be uh, taking a look at our, our own colonies and seeing if there's facilities I should be building. This is Vakunder 4, this is number 2 on the list. I guess if I was to rank my planets, this is the second best one. Although it doesn't have that high of a population cap. 5.3. Um, we only have 2.5 on Piantil, and only 3 on Ryaviv. Or Ryiv? Ryiv? Fife. Wow, what a name. Ryaviv. <laughs> Well, I'm going to say it any other way, I mean, any number of ways, but hopefully you'll know what I'm talking about. Let's start with Kerbal. I mean Kerbal. <laughs> Hairball. <laughs> Can you tell what I've been playing? <clears throat> um, are there any... Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any opportunities for upgrades. Yeah, no. Then what else do we have? So we can get the Energy Academy, Weapons Academy, High Tech Academy, Planetary Defense Center, Special Operations and Troop Cloning, Robotic Troops. Um, the Troop Cloning is kind of interesting to me at the cost of a thousand. We don't really have like a great troop that we'd clone though. I, I wonder... Well, yeah, maybe we'll do it. We could do it. The inhabitants of Hairball are angry. Well, not really. They're plus four. <laughs> We're just taxing them into oblivion, but then making them happy by delivering a lot of luxury goods. Yeah, 10,000. We don't have that much money. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pass on it. There's probably going to be better things to build. Um, I would like, for example, to upgrade our terraforming center eventually and that's gonna be super expensive but you know we don't have the tech for that anyway I mean we could build I mean the Kunder 4 might be a good candidate for building the uh, limited terraforming this is a hundred thousand I think it is and we're only halfway there yeah I mean I think this is probably worth doing though you can see how um, a population growth thing would even help Vakundur 4 even though it was founded pretty early on so that's worth doing the next time we get like a big planet, which unfortunately is, I'm not even sure if it's going to happen. Okay, so we have the planetary administration complex. Is we we have this one on all of them? This one's under construction. I 
assume we have it here. There. Okay, good. So we have the best building for that one. Okay, well, anyway, that's not even the thing I wanted to start off the episode doing, and I already got distracted by it. <laughs> because, you know, of course we're going to be doing our normal look at the tech tree. But the thing I want to start off by looking at is prisoners. So it turns out that, I mean, I haven't, I've completely neglected this screen entirely. But we actually have three prisoners from the Hakonish uh, Union, is it? Yeah, Hakonish Union. And we can try to recruit these guys. The cost of recruiting them goes up with the amount of, like, like how skilled they are. Now, I don't know if... This guy's probably not worth using. I mean, his really nice boost to hyper jump speed um, comes at the cost of... Countermeasures, ship maneuvering, ship speed, and shield recharge rate. He's a poor space defender. He's a drunk. He just has this skilled navigator thing. So, uh, and the technical as well, which is good. It's just amazing that his military ship maintenance savings is zero, despite having the plus five bonus from technical. It's kind of a uh, kind of insane. Uh, the reason is because which one? Yeah, drunk gives you a minus three percent decrease to all existing skills so it's just uh that added with poor space defender you can see why he's he's not very good now we could actually afford this guy no kidding because he's he's terrible um we can also return him if we want to improve relations with the Hakonish union i'm not feeling like particularly generous towards them after they just raided and destroyed one of my space my uh research stations or we could execute him I don't know what the advantage of executing him is, other than he can't escape, but I have no idea what the escape rates are like, and honestly, I don't know if it would be a negative for him to escape. Is he really a benefit to the enemy? I don't know. I guess you could put him on a base and maneuver, speed, countermeasures and recharge rate are still going to matter. Hyper jump speed wouldn't matter at that point, but weapons range increase would be very helpful. I don't know. I'm, I'm halfway tempted to execute him, or just return him. Let's go ahead and take a look at the diplomacy screen and see what is the deal. They are, f wow, furious with us. They're upset against uh, our attack on their military ships after their military ships were in our territory, destroying our stuff. That's just bonkers. I feel like, I honestly do think that the, it, so a negative repercussion to destroying military ships makes sense, but this is just not uh, it's not accounting for the causality of it all like, I didn't intentionally target their ships, I only did it after they were destroying my station I feel like if you send your forces on a guerrilla mission into an enemy territory or, you know, hostile territory well, it's not even, they're not enemy or hostile, they're just unfriendly territory if you're you're discovered and attacked in the middle of trying to destroy something. It's like true sabotage, because it's not that they were just in my territory and discovered. They were in my territory and destroying things. If somebody defends their own sovereign territory, I feel like you can't be too upset at them. Anyways, that's just my long way of saying that this minus 1470 and the minus 260 for this, uh, it seems like huge, enormous overkill. Um, because it's not taken into context you know, well, the context, which is that they were attacking my my buildings. Uh, anyway, okay, so is it going to matter, by the way, that I execute anybody? Obviously, with minus 470, it just doesn't matter at all. Their, their reputation is is not actually that bad. Only I mean, minus 20 is horrible, but it's improving at plus 11 per year. So that's really not that bad. Um, they have a lot of people, including the Securians, which I guess those they conquered them. Anyway, what do I want to do with the Hakonish here? I don't know. Do we want to execute their people? Because some of these guys are actually quite good. Like this guy is is great. I would like to. I would actually like to recruit him. He just unfortunately costs so much money. Why is it more money for this than it is to crash research a tech? I don't know. That's confusing to me. Um, let's go ahead and uh, execute this guy. I want to see what kind of reputation um, effect that has. Can I see my own reputation? Uh, 
Oh. I'm sorry. This is my reputation. <laughs> Oops. Wow, it's the attacks on civilian ships. They don't mind that I blew up a home planet, but they do mind that I attack civilian ships <clears throat> from an unfriendly people who are in my territory. That's confusing. Very confusing system. Well, anyway, <clears throat> uh, we didn't even do go through the, all the research tech stuff, but well, it's, it's just chugging along, and we're going to do a ship design upgrade when that improved destroyer one finishes. Anyway, I just I don't like the Xenox simply from the perspective that you don't have enough colonies. I want to grab more colonies, and you would really, I guess, have to conquer other people. It's not it's just, just not the way I want to do it, though. I'd rather just build my own. Okay. So, you were exposed. Not that it matters. My reputation is pretty bad. This is from... This is Ion Point Defense from the Hidden Skyjackers. Okay, let me take a look at that. Hidden Skyjackers, these guys are an enemy? A friend? I don't know if where we stand with them. I think they were friendly. Well, we'll give it another go. See if he can uh, succeed the second time around. If at first you don't succeed and all that. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's the next thing we're really waiting for, and I'll, I'll go ahead and speed up to X4 even. Next thing we're waiting for is just... Uh, It's paused, or it's very weird that these update so slowly, because I paused it, and I thought it wasn't paused, but it was. Okay, efficient hyperdrives, that's excellent. We'll get the same one. And where are we under attack? Is this in... Okay, that's not in the system I thought it was. Oh my gosh, it's a system which doesn't matter anyway. Uh, you all have to fend for yourself. Oh, if we're low enough on money, maybe I should do one of the construction ones in order to give the incentivize the um, civilians to buy more stuff. No, I'm feeling quite okay, actually. Ah, advanced meta complex. That's that's good. It's a good one. They only have one colony, and it's like everything to them. So I'm not surprised that they're doing that. Yeah, obviously we are friends with the hidden skyjackers. Um, they want to give more Talon language and expressions. This is actually not that bad, but for the price, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Evaded. So, hyper jump inhibiting. Very good. Um, I probably should be looking at these things rather than just blindly shoving them back into the same... I don't even know what I clicked on. Okay, where are you? So, efficient hyperdrive, that is a good thing. Yeah, definitely need to run this one back as well. Consciousness, research, hyperdrive inhibiting. Okay. 75%, only 100 days left. So we can actually try to get some real distance on people from a tech perspective. Okay, we now have defense on that planet, which is good. Still not helping us much in terms of taxes. Oh no, I don't... Thank you, but no thank you. I really don't expect to need that. Okay, we did get the component prefabrication, which is awesome. We didn't have to spend a dime, and it's a very important one. Construction yard gener is generated by itself, but the medium spaceport, we will want to um, design that and then upgrade our spaceports. Or maybe not, but I think we will. Um, okay, so this is Gordos, who needs a new mission now. Um, that's a good question, actually. Okay, offers that will accept that for sure. 
what do we want Gordos to take now? And I think again, it's more about looking at what we like, looking for what we want, and then moving, rather than going about it the other way around. I think large civilian ships, though. Getting large civilian ships is just going to be a way to, essentially, just an, a revenue source. Large civilian ships. Let's see if we can take that one. guys really have everything. It's pretty impressive. Unless this is a bug. I, I really don't understand it. 35 days. We'll slow down to only 2x around the time this completes so that the time lapse from when it should complete and when it actually does is decreased a little bit. Okay, that's interesting. They, uh, oh my gosh, they took over Baskaran colony? I actually kind of I think that's silly. Well, actually, that's not silly at all. That's fantastic if you want really crack troops. Okay, Borden Kong is under a taxi. Look at this. What are they doing? My goodness. Okay, let me look and see where my fleet is. My fleet is actually here. <laughs> we are here. Okay, they completed advanced medical. That's crazy. Seems like that was pretty quick. No, my fleet is not here. <clears throat> Let's go to the fleet, see where they actually are. Yeah, they're just, they're at our home planet. Okay, but I will move them over. Let's have them jump. Move there. Wow, you know, the defense amount of our second fleet is like almost as much. And why is it, why does first fleet not have anybody on it? Why do you have two admirals? Doesn't seem wise at all. Can you go to first fleet, please? I just feel like we need one per, that would be better. And the Kunder four is being attacked. Oh, we need that on. But this is by automated sentries and somebody who's already at 46%. I think we'll be okay here. Oh, the spaceport is only under construction. Oh, well, maybe I do need to send group two over. No, nope, he's, he's, he's fleeing. Ah, improved destroyers is done now. Fantastic. Okay, so prepare for a uh, very lengthy sojourn into the ship design. By the way, we have officer training. Is this one of the things that I was in the process of trying to take? No, I guess I got to this point and decided that was that. Okay, um, it's 77,000. Well, I kind of, ah, uh, I might need to save the money for upgrades. No, you know what, upgrades are just, they're just not as important. I think that getting the officer training is more important, so that's what we'll prioritize. Prioritize. Okay, ship design. Time to, to rework this entire category. I think everything in here that's manual is outdated. So let me just edit each one of these first, get an idea of what they're... Yeah, we are using proton engines, okay. Are we using fission reactors? My goodness. Okay, this is great. So, so we've got lots of room for improvement here. I'm going to copy this as new, and then we'll deal with it manually. Okay, show me only the latest per category. Let's get some quantum engines in here. And we'll get, uh, well, a multi vector. I guess the multi vector is better if we have the size for it. What, should, is it, what am I doing? This is a colonizer ship. You know what? I'm going to do the single vector. Not that I think this will make a big difference in terms of the movement anyway. 11. Because this thing just doesn't, it just doesn't really need to turn that much. It just goes from point A to point B and then disappears. So we don't want to, we don't really don't want to put too much on this thing. Enhanced armor, we'll leave that on. Um, we'll take the Megatron shields, it already has them. Has crystal sensors, we could put countermeasures on, but we don't really need to. Um, fission reactors, okay, so we probably have the ability at this point to, um, reduce the number of reactors. I'm, I'm guessing that 
two is going to be enough here. And that's true. Great. That's very good news. Um, crew capacity is fine, probably because these crew systems are also at V2. I think that's higher than when I originally designed this thing. So it has no problems where it is right now. And it looks pretty good. It's been so long since I've designed one of these. Good hyperdrive speed. Um, what's the range? Wow, almost a thousand. So that's sufficient, I would say. Not enough for another module. Oh my god, there is. There's actually enough size for another uh, colonization module if I, if I so chose. Which would get us up to a total of 100 million, but as I said, because of the passenger movement, that's actually something I could do, is just put another passenger compartment on. Um, which is not quite as expensive, but it does add another 2,000 people. How expensive is this exactly? Cost... Um, let's just take a look at the what the um, cost supposedly goes up by. 43,000. Yeah, it does not go up by much. So in my opinion, this is the right move, is doing this instead of getting a second colonization module. I wouldn't say right move, though. That's probably not the right word. I would say this is a less expensive move, rely, which relies much more on passenger ships to ferry troops um, to ferry um, the population around. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not. It's there certainly is a lot of merit to putting a ton of people on the new planets, but I'm very cost to, cost averse. Well, really, it's not that. It's just that I favor um, research and spending money on that more than I favor, you know, getting the initial populations on planets higher. Okay, so V4 is done, and I need to go to active designs, because I'm just copying this, so we actually need to obsolete the old one. But I'm doing this because I, I do want to copy it as new and do it myself. I'm leery of, uh, very leery of the auto upgrade after several negative experiences with it. Okay, so we're almost at our limit here. This one might be... Why am I putting multi-vectors on? My goodness. Whoops. Quantum engines. Two quantum engines and a multi-vector. This is our construction ships. I want them to be fast. We'll give them the creme de la creme. Take off our fission reactor and both of them and get new reactors. Fusion. Why don't we have a command center? Oh, we do. I'm going to replace this just because I prefer my command center to be the very first thing, and I usually typically like my hyperdrive to be the second thing, but we'll leave it in this strange order for now. Doesn't look like we need as many crew systems as we have. Yep, we had duplicate. Uh, where what, what will we do with the excess? So, collection rate... Static energy is 39, so we're covering that with our 75. I don't think we need even a second reactor. Okay, we do. So we will, we'll leave that one on there. It's almost overkill. Is there another reactor I'm not looking at here? Is there like one to sneak sneak its way in? Because so we can add more fuel cells, just barely. But yeah, getting rid of one of those fusion react I mean, one of those fission reactors was great. We can add more fuel cells. I mean, we don't really... Oh my gosh, we're, we don't need it. We really don't. Let's go ahead and get that multi-vector. Oh, they're only allowed two engines? Oh my gosh. Well, I hope you like turning it nine degrees a second. I don't know. It might even be worth it. Turn it 12 degrees a second instead. That's pretty slow. You know what? I'm going to stick with the quantum engines. We probably need the second one to be the... There's the middle ground one. There's one that does both thrust and vectoring. Um, that would probably be a good second engine for these colony ships. But when we, when we get the larger, larger... Not colony, construction. When we get the larger construction ship size, we'll probably make the, the switch over. Uh, I think that one will have three engines, and then we'll do the two and one. Okay, crystal sensors. I guess we should be... No, the long range... Isn't the long range... Big... Is it not being shown? Oh, goodness. What? 
Am I crazy? Do we not have a long range scanner? Maybe you can't put it. Wait, I, let me put a pin in this real fast. I, I need to make sure I remember to go back though and look at the, uh, the research that we've done. Okay, <clears throat> should we put weapons on this thing? I mean, we did save some space. It really doesn't need it though. But it has the space for it. What else are you gonna do with that? I can, I remember why we put the crew on there. Just probably put it back even just to save it from being boarded. And we're, yeah, I think we're gonna do it. On top of that, fuel? I mean, it has such crazy range already. It really doesn't need it. Okay, fair enough. Then with all this extra fusion power, let's see if we can sneak one weapon on. We can sneak an ion cannon. <laughs> That's really not the worst thing to sneak on there. It's the only thing which will fit. All right. I think I actually want it on the rear. Um, that way the construction ship, even if it does want to fight, has to fight <laughs> facing the way, which is good. It should not be running at people. Uh, maneuvering is slow, top speed is low, and yeah, max engines. Okay, let's save and quit. Just scan it one more time to make sure I didn't miss anything. Because the crystal sensors are outdated at this point. I'm sure of it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I am stupid. We have large fuel cells. And, you know, just when I thought that we already had too much fuel capacity, we're almost up to 2,000. So that's, you know, what, well, it is what it is. And what it is is quite a lot of range. I wonder if... Wow, we're still over a thousand with only two of them. I was debating whether or not to get a different weapon on there instead, but this thing is not a combat vessel, so no, I d I'm not going to. So we'll leave this the way it is. Let's make sure that I'm not forgetting anything else. Is the Garrix hyperdrive? I assume that is the yeah version three. That's great. Okay, this one is done. Let's also go back and edit the. Uh, colonizer to do the same thing fuel cells i don't know if we really even need the better fuel cells there but we'll do it yeah it's got tons of i i mean you don't need that much range because you only have a there's a limit of how far you away from your colonies you can colonize even but we'll leave it we'll do this that means that uh, well i don't know what it means but we'll, we'll do it anyway I'm, I'm doing this without really knowing if I should, but I've done it, so there. Okay, Destroyer version 2. This one is simply obsolete because we're going to add a new Destroyer altogether. Let's take a look at what our old Destroyer was. Gives us a good reference point for what we're going to be building next. So this has the one hangar. It has a star beam, two point defenses, and a concussion missile. Interesting. So this actually is pretty good at defending itself, point defense-wise. I kind of don't agree with that decision. Um, I think that if I was to go back and do this again, it, it had to happen this way because this one has the, I think, the one on each side, right? But, I, I mean, so it, it seems like it's geared to be point defense, unless you made point defense one of your, like, I mean, yeah, it really does look like it has to be point defense. But I would rather not <laughs> be point defense. So I'm really looking forward to the next destroyer design. Um, we use target tracking. We were stuffed for space, so we couldn't put on uh, the counter, 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 countermeasures. I don't know why I have such a hard time remembering that. We went with three and three. Interesting. So this actually had six defenses, which is what the next fleet destroyer is going to have. Six defenses. In fact, it's a little bit weird that this destroyer has as much defense as any options in the improved destroyer options. Because I think it's four, five, or six for the fa um, fast, heavy, and then fleet destroyer, respectively. If I have that right, I might have reversed the heavy. And no, no, the, f the heavy had five, I think, and the fast one had only four. It's crazy to think about it that way, considering the original one itself had six. You would think that the new designs should be better, like strictly. 
well, maybe not strictly better. It could be a trade-off in some cases, but that's a pretty big, pretty big trade-off. Like the only design which is not worse is the fleet destroyer. And putting it that way, I think yeah, that hopefully that says what it, you know, how I feel about it. That should the new designs that you do all this work to research should be better than just uh, not worse. <laughs> okay, so we want the fleet destroyer, and we can confirm it here. Ah, so I was off by one. Thank goodness. So the fleet destroyer, this one has seven? Wait, 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 wait. What was I referring to? Fast destroyer has six. Okay, so that is, so just completely, I'm engines. I'm referring to engines. <sighs> ah, four, five, and six. Okay, good. So I got the that one mess, messed up. Let's look at their engines. And this one has a maximum of four. Oh, this is so good. Thank you, thank you. I should never have doubted. I should never have doubted Eric or um, Elliot, but I, I, had, I had doubted them for a moment. So yeah, the heavy destroyers more, and so is the fleet destroyer in terms of defense. And one more engine on the fleet destroyer. Was it it's equal for the heavy? Okay, this is good. Okay, now I'm very excited about doing this. And we're going to manually design this one. It's it's an idea, although this is not my assault pod troop-oriented um, playthrough. It's an idea to put assault pods on this if we don't have good weapon arcs. Because that is a way of... I mean, it is essentially a weapon. It doesn't take up a weapon slot. Similar to the, the hangers. Okay, so command center first. <clears throat> I think that we should be putting damage control units on our destroyers. So let's just do that right away. Um, let's put the hyperdrive on. In fact, let me put the hyperdrive on first. I do like to organize them. Probably the fusion reactors go next, even though I don't know how many we'll need. I think two will be sufficient. Um, let's see. Crew systems, we'll, we'll need those eventually. I'll put two on for now. I don't think we'll need three, but I'm pretty sure we're going to need exactly two. Ion shield, interesting. That's a consideration. Let's get the large fuel cells first. Two of these gives this already very, very good range. Yeah, so we could put troop compartments on, but let's let's just see what else we can. What you know? Let's go through the other things first. Engines. Let's put some quantum engines on this. Now we have room for five. So I'm gonna do this. This is gonna be, wow, so fast. Probably I don't need that many engines then. I think we'll go with three and maybe two multi-vectors, make this thing like really turn on the dime. Yeah, that that's impressive. Almost unnecessary. Oh yeah, energy collectors, thank you. That's a good reminder. So 75 is going to cut it. Surely gonna cut it. Okay, so let's get to weapons now. Let's look at these weapon arcs. It looks like it might be the same. It is unfortunately exactly the same. Okay, so we're pretty much gonna be left to do more or less the same thing. <clears throat> oh, you can get a large weapon in front where previously we could only get a medium. Well, that is juicy. And then we're gonna want our missiles We actually have some pretty interesting um, options here. Where the heck is my missile? Am I, am I crazy? Okay, let me go down to weapons specifically. Okay, I'm looking for... Seeking missiles was what they were. And they became not lance missiles. Where are you? Concussion missiles. Okay. So what happened with the concussion missiles? Have I evolved beyond them? Highest tech level is the particle beams, long range cannon, thuan beams. Okay, so we're going to 
save the design, have to like go back out. Oh, okay, what do we want to call this? Uh, you know, I'm not going to be too original here. I think Fleet Destroyer is fine. We'll call it the Fleet Destroyer once so that it... Does it get that? I can't remember if it if the Roman numerals um, enumerate correctly or not. I know that I've already seen this too, so I should remember, but I don't. Sort by bay name now. Okay, uh, let's get back to it. So the, we'll just leave that on, and I, okay, I'm pretty sure what's going to end up happening is we'll put the uh, point defense on. Oh, but there's multiple point defense options. In fact, it's not showing. This is so weird. It is... I don't know if it's showing me the correct stuff. It, I'm pretty sure it's not. Because I think that the point defense we have, which is not this one, is actually better. The energy-based one? I'll do a comparison. We'll just open up the weapons a, you know, a little bit later. But let me go to the tech trees to inform that decision a little bit better. Okay, so medium star bay. We'll put one on. That's great. Looking good on size and everything, too, which is also very good news. And now we have seven defenses, which is perfect. I know exactly how I want to do that. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. This thing is going to be almost impervious. I'm not even sure if I want. I might go with something like. I, I'm debating. I might go with the extra enhanced armor instead. The shields just they just don't fail very often. But then the shields are our strength, and it makes sense to to lean upon your strength. Because this is technically an armor reduction from the improved destroyers. But the Ion Sheath armor also upgrades over time. Like, there is a V2, so that's what I'm kind of considering here. Um, okay, I'm going to leave it like this. We're, we aren't going to build them. I probably won't even end up building any of these, these at this episode, so you'll have time to provide feedback, and I'll have time to, uh, to include that feedback before we finalize the designs, even though, I mean, it wouldn't be that hard just to upgrade it or retrofit it to, like, a V2. But even better if I don't have to do that. I can just edit the design right away. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I am i mean, it has a lot of space remaining. Well, not a lot of space. 62. I feel like I've gotten what I want out of it. Which the next category would be the weapons. Okay, so Fleet Destroyer 1. There's nothing glaring missing. In fact... Okay, the turning rate is lower, it's saying, so I probably will go with the second one being another multi-vector. Whoa. It was only going that fast, what I saw earlier, because I hadn't put any other stuff on it. Of course, as the... This is so cool, by the way, that the game models this. As the uh, weight of it, as the more parts add up, the speed drops. It does take that into account. It's really good to see. Let me go ahead and add, then, probably that last quantum engine. Which is also going to be very sizable. Now, I don't think I want to do that. This is a destroyer, 6270. Okay, it did go up by one. 6371. But it also has much better turn rate, which is um, what I was hoping to see. Design has no problems. Let's save and exit. We're going to come back to it, though. So let's deactivate this one. Right before we do, let's edit it. Yeah, it has Sentinel, Multi-Beam Defense, and Concussion Missiles. Let's look at what is the best thing to be using now. Okay, so... Rapid Points Defense is here. That's not the best one to use, the Buckler. <clears throat> Although, it's, I guess it's on par with the Sentinel Multi-Beam Defense. So it does look like we have better point defense in the other one. Yeah. I guess it's true. It was a true statement. This is a... Well, that's the missiles. So our, our... Yeah, our most advanced missiles are the concussion missiles. I'm not crazy. I guess it could... We could use the lightning missiles if we want, depending on which size we want on there. We might as well just look at the weapon category and compare the concussion missiles versus the lightning, although we can kind of compare here. I think I already have. The lightning missiles are one category behind, but they also extend one category further. So that I mean that means that they can not only will they be I think they are better by the second tech, and they'll also be even better 
if we continue down the line. Um, that said, yeah, the enhanced point defense, it truly is the best that we have. Although I might as well do that comparison on camera. Okay, that's very useful. I'm like, this is so cool that we're gonna, our ships are gonna actually get a huge jump in, in, uh, in but like a power spike. I mean, not just power, combat spike. So Fleet Destroyer 1, edit this guy. Okay, now weapons. Let's go to weapons. Okay. So Concussion Missile um, V3 has damage of 3.2 and max range 2.8. So 3.2, 2.8 versus, where is the lightning? Here. 3.2 and 2.8. So the lightning is better in both categories, but range is 1900. Concussion, concussion missile range is 2810. I really like the longer range. I really, really like it. I'm almost positive we're going to go with this. Now we can actually go with the large size on this, which is crazy. This is 1.9 a second, and this is 4.2. That's not a that's a no-brainer. I thought there was another large, which is potentially useful. Oh my God, this heavy railgun is 5.4. And the range is actually not bad at 1450. Although this one has a range of 4200. Are you kidding me? Jeez Louise. We cannot, we cannot afford it because of size restrictions. We're at 619. I mean, we basically have only 50 or so available, which means this is mandatory. Um, so medium is mandatory. 38 versus the lightning, which is also 38. Okay, good. They made that a fair decision. So I think I'm gonna add this one on and then add the point defense. So now we wanna look at point defense. Can I go? I wonder if this is gonna do this correctly. I don't know what this means. Weapon, intercept. I don't know what the N stands for. I guess it's just intercept, IN. Okay, well this is useful because I do want these all compared together. Blocking field generator, no. Uh, okay, so this one's uh, not, range 950, 1. 4, you almost don't care about the damage. I think it more is about how fast is it gonna fire. And speed is 5,000, that's pretty good. Armor bypass plus 20%. Then point defense, so this is 1.3 and 0 0.6, 3 and 0 0.6. This is better in in both categories, has higher range. I guess it doesn't have, uh, this one has armor bypass, which is better since those things aren't gonna have shields. Oh, but the, okay, so as it, I remember thinking about this earlier, this is better against fighters, but it's just not as good against missiles. And I think most of the time we're going to be going up against missiles. So what I need to do is I'm going to put the Sentinel multi-beam defense back on. Also conveniently two smaller, uh, the size is smaller by two. And then I'm going to prioritize, I have to prioritize upgrading this because I'm making a statement that I'm committing to it. Our research should reflect that. Okay, we're over by four, but I'm not too concerned about that. We'll find a way to drop and, you know, get back down. None of these weapons are going to come off. I mean, I mean, if... The only way that'll happen is if we replace it with something else. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the shields, drop one of the shields, and replace it with uh, an enhanced armor. That will mean that the shields have not decreased compared to our previous destroyers. However, the armor has gone up. We've essentially added one ion sheath armor, which we didn't have before. And I don't think we've ever lost a destroyer. In fact, we've, very, we've lost so few ships like in our just entirely we've only lost so few ships that it almost makes sense by the way for me to just add another ion sheath which would be 125 versus oh like 190 so it would be only effectively a like a half enhanced armor addition compared to the previous destroyer which again has never been destroyed or probably never even been nicked um but it would add even more ion defense just not sure we need more than one. So I'm gonna go ahead with the enhanced armor. 
Okay, fair enough. That's mostly just to, because it'll save us the size, which is quite nice. So we have four remaining. I guess what I want to do is actually remove one of these multi-vectors and put in a single vector. And with the five remaining size, I plan to get a... I need to go to research. I forgot to look at the, the scanners. Um, okay, so let me do this first. Single vector, because this is going to save us an additional two. That gives us five remaining, which is what I knew the sensors cost. I mean, the, the crystal scanner is only five. So if nothing else, I should use that. Let me go down to the very bottom, which is where, where we are. Very good. Now I need scanners. Was I... Scanners? They were down here, right? Was I, I stupid? I missed them? <laughs> okay. So we have um, short-range scanners. These are 125.3. These are 153. So they're better. Uh, trace scan range is five, half, half a million. This is less than that. So crystal scanners are definitely better. And the long-range scanner, uh, long-range sensor arrays are size 70. I don't know why this doesn't appear on my list though. I was, I thought that it should at least appear and then not be available. I'm not sure why that's happening. Anyway, so we know the best things are still to use the crystal scanners. Man, God, you cannot trust this ship designer for crap. <laughs> I, okay, I don't want. I shouldn't judge it too quickly. I've made mistakes before, but is it true that it is showing for latest category? It's not showing the crystal scanners. Yeah, I don't. I really don't understand this. So let's go ahead and grab the crystal scanner instead, since that's what I. I mean, it's the best one. There it is. Okay, very good. So now it's only got one size remaining. And it has good jump range, good speed, very good turn rate, which we prioritized. Good point defense, good standard. I, I think it's just going to be an all around a very good ship. Compared to our previous destroyer, it's actually not that much better. It's not better in terms of offensive capability. Okay, that's not true. We got a large star beam. And I need to ask the question, does the large star beam have more... bombardment so I probably could by the way sacrifice this large star no it's only size 45 that's awesome star beam is so it's so small so does this star beam have what 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 WCL and this is not considered WST standoff oh it's considered a standoff because its range is high enough, I guess. So this is 0.34, and the other ones are 0.27. So yeah, in fact, it will, it is an increase in bombardment capability. All right, good, so this is the Fleet Destroyer. I don't have time to do the rest of the upgrades, so we'll have to leave this one there where it is. We'll do the rest of the designs in the next episode. So yeah, t let me know if there's any thoughts about the designs I've already done, or you know, if you want to predict the designs coming up, feel free. Otherwise, we'll be doing those as part of the next episode and then continuing on. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And until the next one, stay safe and take care.